so originally I was going to upload a video talking about my thoughts on microtransactions and trust me that's still coming it's actually completed rendered and uploaded but I decided I actually want to release this video today on August 12th of 2016 because today is the last day that Project Spark is going to be online and if anything that is really disappointing because we are seeing an entire game die off in case you don't know what Project Spark is, Project Spark is a game that was going to be on Microsoft platforms and is on there. It released on the Windows 8, Windows 8.1, Windows 10 store, so whatever you want to call that, on Xbox One, and it was going to come out on Xbox 360, but unfortunately that port just ended up getting cancelled for whatever reason and we never heard anything about it. It was originally touted at E3 and it was going to be a release title for the Xbox One where it was a meta game where you could go in and create games and it looked really cool and for the most part it worked out pretty well now I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it but I thought it was cool and I think that was most people's story with it unfortunately they probably didn't even know about it because it didn't get the most press it also did not come out on launch so it ended up getting delayed and when it came out I remember it didn't make as big of a splash as I thought it would have but it was this open game where you could get it for free you could play it and then you could end up buying stuff and you could share games that you made on there there were some really interesting things for example there was a fan made conquer game there's also a other game that is RT which was pretty much a spin on Konami's PT except on Project Spark and on the Xbox One and when you beat it you end up finding out that it was actually a teaser for the Conquer game that was going to be coming out which we ended up playing that and apparently the developer who also made that ended up releasing a game this week as well too. Now if you have Project Spark you can still play it. If you have the games downloaded that you download through Project Spark you can still play them but unfortunately the servers will go offline so after the servers are taken offline you can no longer download the fan made projects or anything that was on there and even in a last ditch effort to try and get more people on before they made this announcement months ago they even made everything free so this used to be a game where you could buy stuff on there and it was optional but they made all the content free and this is disappointing on so many levels. One, this is an entire game that is dying off because it was solely a digital game on that aspect. And this is one reason why I absolutely hate this digital exclusivity sometimes because stuff like this happens. Now that Project Spark is dead, what if there are people that discover this game in two years and see it's really cool, but they can't access the servers and see any of this stuff? If my Xbox One dies and I don't have the games or any of the saves backed up, that's it. I can't play them anymore. And we really don't have a proper way of archiving this. We've seen this with countless other games as well too for different reasons, one of them being Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which is an excellent game on the Xbox 360 and PS3, but if you're looking it up right now, you cannot download it or purchase it through legitimate means because something happened with the licensing and it only released digitally, meaning that the only way you could download it now is either by an illegal mean and modifying your system to play that pirated copy, or by having an account that already has it purchased and re-downloading it through there or again also finding a console or having console that already has it downloaded to it and how many other MMOs and mostly online reliant games have we seen that have gone offline completely because of things like this because the community was dwindling and because nothing else was going on and that was one thing with Project Spark as I said I feel like a lot of people played it for a little bit and they thought it was cool and then they just didn't really go back to it and the Spark team just couldn't really keep people on there but the people that stayed on there were still dedicated but I guess the dedication wasn't enough to justify keeping the game up and running which also from a business standpoint I can understand because gaming is not a charity it's still a business the reason why I also wanted to make this video is it's kind of personal uh, the project spark team they were the first developers that actually showed me love now you're not gonna find the videos because they've either been removed or privated because it doesn't really matter all that much now and I'll explain that what happened the summer of 2015 so about a year ago I was on Twitter Twitter and I got a follow from a Project Spark Twitter account and it didn't have a official verified tweak and it was like Proj Spark so it wasn't even the full name so I was like wait a minute is this real and I looked at it and it seemed legit so I decided to follow it back and shortly after following it back I ended up getting some DMs in my Twitter account and we had some exchanges what happened was they said that they saw my YouTube channel and they ended up really enjoying the content they saw on there and they asked me if they could send me some codes for the Conquer DLC 
DLC they had at the time while it was still paid so that I could give them away to my subscribers. And my first thought was, wait, are, are you guys serious? Really? You're, you're giving these to me? And they said, you know what? We're, we're giving you the codes. Yeah, you can give them away to your subscribers or you can give them away to friends or you can do whatever you want to with them. It doesn't matter to us. We would just like to give you these codes. Would you accept that? And I said, absolutely, I would accept that. And what ended up happening was I got 20 codes. Now, five of them were for the premium content and the other 15 were for just like the regular Conquer content. And what I did to prevent any disparity, I ended up giving the five pieces of, you know, the Conquer premium DLC to my girlfriend at the time and four other friends of mine. And the other 15, I ended up giving away on the channel. Now, of course, what ended up happening shortly after that, you know, I gave away the codes and all that stuff. And it was a really awesome gesture, you know, on their part to give them to me. But they ended up making all the content free. So then that didn't matter as much because anyone could enjoy that Conquer content. But it was what happened that was just so memorable to me. It was cool to see these developers reach out to me, and I even asked them what you all liked about my channel, and they said, we liked your modding stuff, we liked how you presented that news, and it was just, it was so touching to hear that, honestly, and I know I'm going on about myself for a few minutes, but hey, this is how I was personally involved with them, and it was really cool to see this, you know, just talking to these developers, and they were the official guys, too, with the at Microsoft accounts and everything. They were even so cool that when I ended up giving away the codes, one of my subscribers emailed me back, and he said, said, hey, I tried the code and it didn't work. So I emailed the guys at Project Spark and they said, oh, we're really sorry about that. What's his gamer tag? So I got the guy's gamer tag. I sent it over and they added the content to his account. They were cool enough to do that. And they didn't do any interviews on my channel, but I had looked around at other channels and other channels that were around my size, like 15, 20,000 subscribers that were still, you know, kind of medium sized channels. The developers were taking times out of their days to go to these channels and do interviews with them on places such as Google Hangouts, and it was so awesome to see that they were not only dedicated to their in-game Project Spark community, but even just the Project Spark community outside of the game in general. Look, all I can say is it's extremely disappointing that this game is taken offline. I understand, you know, it probably didn't make sense from a monetary point to keep it online, but this was a community of developers that really cared about their product. They cared about the consumer, and as I said, even in an attempt to get more people on, they made everything free, but I just don't know really what they were doing wrong on there. In fact, I think there's a lot of people here that because of the lack of advertisement of the game, this might be their first time hearing about Project Spark, and if it is, I'm sorry, like, the game might be offline, so you might not even be able to try it by the time you hear this. But again, this just goes to show that games that are reliant on online services can be taken away from you at any time, and that is why I hate some of those games. Even Blizzard, for example, and other big companies are really guilty of this. Now, is Blizzard going to go out of business anytime soon? It's doubtful, however, it's not impossible. What I hate, for example, is I ended up purchasing Diablo 3 on PC for $60 when it came out, and if I have bad internet or no internet, I can't play that game. And what's even worse is that it's reliant on Blizzard servers, so if Blizzard ever goes out of business or their servers go out offline, I can't play the game. And some people might be trying to argue that, but listen, Air 37 was a thing, and anytime they're doing maintenance for Diablo 3, I can't play a single player experience. And to me, that's that's just wrong. At least with Project Spark right here, yes, the servers aren't online, but I can still play my local content, and it should be at minimum to that. Although this shows that yes, we can do pretty awesome things with the internet and gaming when they are collaborated like that at the same time we are so reliant on it that games can just go poof just like that and that's it. And finally, let's also remember that this is a metagame. This is a game designed for creating games on top of it. In short, it is kind of a platform or an engine, so to speak. So that means all the people that spent all that time making those Project Spark games that got a ton of likes and plays and views, those are going to be gone. Those are going to live on through people's hard drives and accounts, and that's it. They're going to be taken off the servers, and that's even more disappointing, because then that's an entire community where all their work is lost. Anyways, if this is your first time hearing about Project Spark, or you tried it before, or you had some good or bad times with it, let me know and drop those experiences down below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd recommend liking the video, because that would show some appreciation. But if you didn't like it at all and you hated Project Spark, I guess you can dislike it as well, too. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. Hopefully I gave you all some food for thought.